It's impossible to talk about the guitar pyrotechnics of Jimi Hendrix without mentioning the man who served as his musical anchor at both ends of his legendary career. Most fans know that Billy Cox was the bassist in Hendrix's band of gypsies. Some may even know he played on the very first notes of Hendrix's famous rendition of the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. But the cox Hendrix connection goes back to the days when the latter was an unknown musician playing an out-of-tune guitar at an army base in Kentucky. In fact, it actually began long before the two men ever met. William Billy Cox, a Wheeling native, was born in 1941. His parents encouraged him to play music, and his early interests included piano and saxophone. His family lived a stone's throw from the Capitol Music Hall, home of the Wheeling Jamboree, and a young Cox listened to the incredible musicians that appeared on the show through an open side door. He also grew up listening to Nashville radio station WLAC. The station's 50,000 watts had a huge reach, especially at night, and had a popular program that featured raw R&B and early rock and roll. Likewise, Seattle teenager Jimi Hendrix was able to pick up WLAC. When the two first met, this shared bond made them feel like they had known each other for a lifetime. When he was a teenager, Cox's family moved to Pittsburgh's Hill District. It was there at a school dance that he first heard what he later called a sound resounding in the universe, the thump of an electric bass. He immediately became hooked on the instrument's powerful low end. After high school, Cox joined the Army and was stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. One rainy evening in 1961, he slipped into the bass's service club and heard Private James Hendrix playing. He immediately thought, man, that cat is going to be bad. The two quickly began playing together, and after Hendrix was discharged, they moved to Nashville and formed the King Casuals, which played the Chitlin Circuit and experimented with a sound built around unison bass and guitar riffs. Cox, who was struggling to make ends meet, declined the offer to join Hendrix, first in Little Richard's band, and then on the fateful trip to England where Hendrix formed the experience. However, Hendrix promised to call Cox once his career was established. In the meantime, Cox spent much of the later 60s doing session work in Nashville and playing in the house band of Noble Blackwell's Night Train, a local R&B TV show that was one of the first to feature an all-black cast. You don't Finally, in the spring of 1969, with the Jimi Hendrix experience flaming out and its star in need of stability, Cox replaced bassist Noel Redding and appeared at Woodstock and at the band's fabled New Year's Eve performance at New York's Fillmore East. That concert, which featured drummer Buddy Miles, would be immortalized as the live album Band of Gypsies. After Mitch Mitchell rejoined Hendrix in 1970, Cox was part of a set of recordings that would be released years later as First Rays of the New Rising Sun. But the vibes surrounding Hendrix were becoming ominous. The band's last tour in Europe was plagued by drug use and dissent. Cox left the tour and returned to Nashville. Cox would work with other musical mavericks, such as country star Charlie Daniels and groundbreaking female guitarist Charlotte Char Vintage. In recent years, Cox's connection to Hendrix has led him to step back into the limelight. He appeared with Buddy Miles on the 2006 release The Band of Gypsies Return, and he works with the Hendrix family-run organization Experience Hendrix. Billy's own career continues with a new album of original material called Old School Blue Blues. Billy Cox. You keep a rockin' and a rollin' on you keep a rockin' and a rollin' on. Keep on rockin' and a rollin'.